Hi, my name's Matt Denton, this is Mantis Hacks. I was just in the process of making a part five of my DO droid build, and I realized I needed something, and I was about to go away and make it and then carry on the video. But then I thought, no, I'm gonna stop and make a video about the part I'm gonna make. And the problem is I need a stand for this to sit on, because when I take uh, Dio's wheel assembly off, he wants to fall over, and when I'm working on Dio, and I want to be able to operate the head, let's say, I want something that you can sit on that's nice and secure and I can uh, still operate all of the functions. So basically it's just a stand and currently I've just been chocking them up on whatever I can find. The solution is going to be um, designing something in the CAD package, sending it into a slicing package and that will generate files for my 3D printer. So having owned several printers and done lots of 3D printing videos, uh, a common question I get asked a lot by friends and family is can you print me this part? And the answer is usually yes, you can print nearly anything, but it's the process of getting to the part you want to print. Scaling up these wheels, these Lego wheels here. So I took this part here and I scaled it up by a factor of five to this part here. But in order to do that, I had to draw this part in CAD before I could print it. And that's one of the most important steps. Lots of people come up to me and say, can you print this? Yes, I can, but do you have the file, the digital version of the file that you want to print? And quite often they just have the part they want to replicate, but don't know how to make the digital file. That's what this video is really about. It's the process of going from an idea to cadding it up and then printing it out. And it's a very simplistic version of what that process is, but at least it might give people an idea of what I have to do when I want to create a new part and print it. So here is my CAD package, which is a Libra design. And this is uh, D.O. with uh, some of his panels missing, so I can see inside of him. So what I'm going to be making is a base down here that uh, this lower chassis part, highlighted in yellow, is going to sit on. So I'm going to start by creating a new part. So you start in, uh, uh, by creating a 2D drawing. And I'm creating it in this plane, and I'm literally going to draw a rectangle and I'm just going to constrain that rectangle to the center line so that it's symmetrical around the center lines of the drawing. I'm going to give it some dimensions and this dimension here I'm going to take a measurement off of DO itself. Let's just go back to DO and what I want to know is the width of this block of material. So I want my parts, my stand to be about the same width as this part here. So I'm just going to measure that across there. It says 47 millimeters. I'm going to go slightly under that. I'm going to go 45 mil, so I've got some clearance. So that's this dimension here. So I'm just going to update that 45 millimeters. Okay, now I'm going to deactivate the sketch. So I'm now going to extrude it to a depth of 50 millimeters. And what that's going to do is create my block of material. So that's it. That's the start of pretty much everything I ever draw in CAD. It would just be a block of material. The next thing to do is I want to create a cutout of this in a, an arc like this, which is going to be where DO is going to sit, the base is going to sit on. So first of all, I'm going to take another measurement, and that is the diameter of this here. Uh, it's telling me there's a radius of 100.855, so 202 is the diameter, and I'm going to give it some clearance, probably about 203. So I want to now create another drawing in this plane, I'm going to create a circle, like so, and I'm going to give it a diameter of 203. The next thing I want to do is I want to constrain that circle to the center of the drawing by constraining those two parts together. So now I can move it up and down, but I can't move it side to side because it's constrained to the center. And so I want to constrain the circle from the bottom line to the bottom of the circle edge, line to inside. So I want a constraint here, and this is going to be the height off the ground. I'm just going to put 20 millimeters in, and I'm going to go back and measure this edge here to this edge here. And there's the line, there's the measurement. It's going across at the moment, but all I want to do really is flatten it to this plane here. So I'm just going to project that to the plane here. So that shows me the distance from the edge of that and out to the edge of the drive wheel which is 16.276 millimeters. I think if I made that 20 millimeters, it should be enough clearance. 
should be more than enough, I would have thought, at 22 millimeters. I'm now going to use that drawing of the circle as a tool to cut through this piece of material. So I'm going to do an extrude cut. And I want to go through all of it. There we go. Now I have this nice shape that Dio is going to sit into. So I want to make this uh, a bigger base so it's not going to fall over. So I'm going to come down to this surface on the back here. When I'm going to draw on this surface, I'm going to create another rectangle. Something like that. I'm going to make it symmetrical around the centre line and I'm going to give it a dimension of 20 millimetres long. Now I'm going to use this constraint which is a uh, collinear constraint and that means that this line is collinear with that edge. So that keeps it constrained nicely there. And then I'm going to give this a, a width, let's say 120 mil, something like that. I'm going to deactivate that sketch and then I'm going to extrude that part and currently it's saying it's going to extrude down, so I want to go negative five millimeters. So then that adds a foot to the base of my part. Now, because I've built this on a center line by making everything symmetrical, I can simply mirror this part, which is the extrusion of the foot along this plane here, which is in the middle of my part. And you can see there's the mirrored part. So now I've got two feet on there, so that's useful. I'm going to remove some of the meat here because I only want the edges really to support DO. So I'm going to activate my sketch in this plane here. What I'm going to do is create something like this. I'm going to do a collinear constraint to the top of the foot here. So those line up. And I'm going to do another collinear constraint to the top of the part. A symmetrical constraint again so that the part is kept in the middle. A width and it should be fully constrained then let's have a look 30 millimeters that seems about right okay I can extrude cut there we go and cut that chunk out the middle I'm going to get rid of some of the meat in here I don't need to print all of this same thing again just a rectangle I'm going to use it as a cutting tool rectangles constrained to the middle of the drawing I'm going to make the width a fixed width of let's say 25 millimeters uh, but I'm going to constrain the length by doing a measurement from one end to the edge of the drawing. So let's make that say 15 millimeters. Cut tool again. Yep, there we go. I might make that, because I'm going to put a chamfer on this edge, so I might make that a little bit narrower. So I'm just going to go back in and edit the sketch. Maybe make that 20 millimeters. Now, before I finesse it, I can save this up and put it into the assembly so I can see how uh, well it fits with uh, DO and then I'm going to insert this part into my assembly okay, and now it's in the assembly I'm going to constrain it to DO as if DO was stood on it so I'm going to use a circular constraint from this to this radius here so now it's constrained DO's radius of the base but it can move back and forwards the reference geometry there's the planes of the part that I built in brown so now I can use those to constrain the center line, for example, to center it up on the base. And the same with this one here, which is going to stop it from rotating because now it's constrained in one dimension. I need to constrain it in the other dimension, but it's constrained from here to here. Okay, so now we can see Dio sat on that base part and it looks like it would be wide enough to support him. So I'm quite pleased with that, but what I'm going to do now is just uh, tidy it up a bit and add some strength in places. First of all, I am going to add some chamfers. Uh, I'm going to guess at about five millimeters. Yeah, so it's going to come right up to that edge. So let's add in a nice chamfer there. Some chamfers on the edges of these legs to give them some strength. But that's not going to be an equal chamfer. It's going to be uh, two distances. I don't know what that's going to be yet. Let's have a look. 15 by 25. Okay, that's pretty good. And now I'm going to add some fillets um, just around these edges off. So it'll be uh, these edges here. Okay, two millimeters seems to work. So now we've got some rounded edges. And I'm going to do the same on these just because I like to make things looking neat. And there's another point in here that I'd probably add a fillet in. It's looking good. And the last place would be these corners. And uh, obviously all this is just really making it pretty. Sometimes it does help with strength as well because you don't have any hard edges. 
but uh, that's looking pretty good. Let's go back and check it on DO. Looking pretty nice. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now I need to export it as an STL file ready for uh, slicing before it goes to the printer. So I'm going to be using Cura as my slicing package and I'm using uh, my TAS6 printer which has already been selected up here and this is the TAS6 bed. So I'm going to open my part up which is my base stand so I'm just going to rotate it like so so that it sits flat on the base, that's good. I'm going to be using Polylite PLA, PLA material. I'm going to use the standard recommended settings, 20% infill. I don't need any support. Let's prepare the part. And then let's have a look at the layer view, which I always like to do. So now the slicer, basically what that has done is it's sliced the model up into lots and lots of layers, ready for the printer to be able to print. Now this part doesn't need much detail. So actually, I could change the profile slightly here and I could go for a high speed profile. We don't really need detail in this part because it's purely a mechanical part. See all the different layers there. So that's basically what the slicer does. It takes the model and, and breaks it into layers ready for the printer to print. And we can go down through those layers here and see inside of the model all the way down to the bottom. So the bottom has a couple of solid layers and then it goes to infill, that's 20% infill. And the outside edges have two la layers each, two lines on the outside edges until we get all the way to the top. So that's it, that's ready to print now. I just need to save that file to an SD card and start printing. This has taken about 20 minutes of CAD work and about uh, an hour and a half, an hour, yeah, an hour and a half to print it, something like that. So two hours from start, to, from concept to finished part, which is why 3D printing is um, revolutionary. Let's try DO out on the stand and see how it works. Um, obviously this is uh, my first attempt, so there might be some problems. Um, well, it's a pretty nice fit. And I still need to those rubber feet on the base, I think, just so that the base uh, doesn't slide around. Now, the only thing I can see that is a slight problem with is that it's quite slippery. So, he wants to rotate around the base of the stand, which is going to be a problem. But I think the solution to that would be just to get some kind of um, tape, and run some tape along here. I might even have some neoprene, actually, that I could run along there, glue to it. Well, no. Okay, well I might go and grab some um, neoprene and try that and then uh, and also I'll grab the four rubber feet and stick those on and I think that's pretty much done. And I found some uh, neoprene adhesive back neoprene, it's about uh, one and a half mil thick and some sticky feet. Uh, so I just want to cut some uh, bits of this up. The reason why I need the stand. So that's my neoprene tape added and my sticky feet. Well, that feels better. Yeah, it's pretty hard to move move now at all, so it feels pretty rigid. I don't think that's going to work. There we go. So that's quite good. And now I can run Dio on the spot and I can see all the mixing that I've added and test all the functionality without DO falling over. But there it is from problem to solution in less than two hours of course made possible by CAD and 3D printing techniques and hopefully there's something in that process that you'll find useful. I've got to get back to making my DO part 5 video.